Today, I want to talk about Wallop, the art god himself, creator of hundreds of absolutely beautiful paintings. So how does he do it? Why is it that his art is so, so unique and captivating? Well, in this video, I'll be breaking down and analyzing some of the fundamental concepts behind Wallop's artworks. And I'll be going into the thought process behind these techniques, so hopefully you'll be able to learn and apply them into your own artworks. The first of the key principles behind Wallop's artworks is contrast. Now, there's a lot more complexity to contrast than it may first appear, and Wallop truly, truly loves adding contrast to his images. There are three fundamental types of contrast in art, and Wallop constantly uses every single one of these in order to really make his art pop out. The first of these is a value contrast. This is the primary form of contrast that Wallop employs, but by value contrast, I'm not just talking about a wide range of defined shadows and highlights, though it is indeed something that Wallop does and is something that is very important. But the key point is how Wallop strategically emphasizes his focal elements by positioning them against a background with a vastly different value. If we go to any of his paintings, he uses this form of contrast in every single one of them. This might be hard to pinpoint, so if we turn them to grayscale, you'll be able to easily see the prominent use of value difference between a subject and the background. In particular, Wallop loves it to either frame a bright subject on a dark background or a darkened subject on a bright background, some examples of which you can see here. The purpose of this contrast is that it serves to make the subject pop out a lot more and also makes the image much more readable and clear even at a small scale, which is actually what a lot of images will be viewed at on social media. It is at this small scale that you really need to make a good impression in order to get the viewer to click on your image, so this makes contrast particularly important. The key takeaway here is that Wallop uses value contrast in order to frame his characters, and he manages to do this while still maintaining believability that his characters actually belong in the scene. If you want to apply this form of value contrast into your own artworks, then one of the most effective ways to do this is to incorporate a strong primary light on your character, which is something you can see Wallop doing in all of these paintings in order to separate the character from the background. But it's not just value contrast that Wallop uses. With color contrast, you can see it in pretty much every single painting he creates as well. The important thing with color contrast is that Wallop uses it when a strong level of value contrast cannot be achieved. He explains this in his Saber Lily painting tutorial, where he says, Usually the best way to frame your character is value contrast, but in this piece, the background and the dress have a similar value, so I have to use another way to frame the character, color contrast. Blue can frame the dress well out of the yellow wheat field. Another painting that you can see this principle being applied is in this piece, where although the differences in value throughout the piece is not as distinct as his other pieces, you can see that he compensates for this since his subject is wearing red against a mildly blue background. And this is enhanced by having a big brown owl right next to her, providing further color contrast. When picking contrast in colors, you'll need to think about color theory and how this split complementary, this tetradic, this analogous. Nah, no, it's really not that complicated. All you really need to keep in mind is that you should be picking colors that are far apart on the color wheel. If we look back on the Saber Lily painting, then we can see what Wallop means by blue can frame the dress well out of the yellow wheat field. Since if we look at the shades of blue and yellow on the color wheel, then we can see that they are pretty much opposite each other. This means that the color contrast provided will indeed work well to make the character stand out against the yellow. But it's important to keep in mind that Wallop didn't pick blue purely for that purpose. He was able to use blue because that is the ambient color that is provided from the scene that his character is in. Now if we go back to this piece, then once again compare the colors, you'll see that all the colors are indeed relatively far apart on the color wheel. The last of the fundamental types of contrast is shape contrast. However, by shape contrast, I'm not simply referring to a circle on top of a rectangle type of shape contrast. The most important type of contrast that Wallop uses, and also the aspect that makes his art so, so unique, is that he renders the focal point of his paintings in extreme detail, 
while rendering the rest of his painting with this distinct signature wallop style look where the brushstroke textures are still clearly visible. This creates such a mesmerizing effect where the entire piece looks so incredibly detailed and yet when you look closely at certain aspects of it, you'll see that it was made with only a few simple strokes. Now, as the old saying goes, there's detail in simplicity, and this very much holds true for Wallop's paintings. I would argue that making the surrounding elements less detailed while still maintaining readability is much, much harder than simply rendering everything. Now, let's look at one of his paintings. Once again, you can see how he renders the character in high detail while he renders the rest of the painting with a few simple strokes. But if we look closely, we can see that the main type of brush that Wallop uses is the hard round brush, and the outlines of this brush is recognizable in almost all of his paintings. So how does Wallop manage to convey so much detail with so little detail? Well, he does this by conveying only what is necessary. This means that he uses his brush strokes to convey form, material, and ambient lighting. There's still a lot more that I wanted to discuss in this video, but I'll be making two more videos as part of a mini-series analyzing Wallop's art. The next video will be about another side of Wallop's art, and in the final video I'll be going over how to recreate one of the Wallop's artworks by doing multiple studies and sharing the things I've learned from them. If you're interested in that, be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. Anyways, thanks for watching.